God, is, God cannot die. Let me give you a little lesson here. God, one of the reasons, when Jesus, the Bible said, who was Colossians 2, 9 and Colossians 2, 10, for in him Christ Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. In Christ dwells what? The fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Godhead bodily is spirit. The Godhead, the only time you, nowhere, nowhere do you see this, you can't see a spirit. Jesus said that. So, so Christ, in, when Christ was born, it's, it's, and I love how Mac, nobody fills in these little blanks like Mac Licato. I just love it. You know, here's, here's the created one, the creator being created in a womb. That's a miracle all by itself, Sister Betty. Hallelujah. And he said, he said, God getting, a, getting kidneys and eyebrows and <laughs> fingerprints. Can you imagine what his fingerprints would be like? There wouldn't be a set to match them anywhere on this planet. That's another, there's another lesson that could go with that, but... <laughs> Think about this. God, Christ was God in the flesh all of his life from the moment of conception. And on the cross, on the cross, why would, what happened to cause Jesus to make this statement? My God, my God, why are you forsaking me? Why is Jesus saying that? Because for the very first time in his human existence, that Spirit of God in him starts withdrawing. Because God can't die. You can't kill God on the cross. You can't kill him anywhere. God can't die. But that's why he wanted a body that could die. A perfect body. A perfect sacrifice. A perfect lamb. With perfect, incorruptible blood. That's right. Amen. Amen blood that can't be corrupted and so now hanging on that cross the spirit of God God a spirit began to withdraw from that body and for the first time in Christ's existence on this planet he knows what it feels like to not have God fill him up two things are happening here one is God is withdrawing from him. The Bible said in the Old Testament it's what a, that God would turn his face from the lamb, from the sacrifice. And God will allow his wrath to be poured out upon this sacrifice. And the sacrifice will cry out like a lamb led to a slaughter now on the cross. Silent before the rulers and the leaders, but now on the cross he will cry out, My God, who are you? Why have you forsaken me? It also lets Jesus know how every person in this room would felt before we came to Jesus. We, he lets him know as our intercessor standing before the throne of God, it lets Christ know just how empty a man or woman can feel without God in their life. That's why he longs for every one of us to be saved and to reach somebody. Hallelujah. Because he is crying out himself. Why are you leaving me? Why have you forsaken me? And he said, it's Paul here now and and back in the second chapter, Paul is saying that, that, was, that happened so that he actually could have a body to die in or to die with. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, this is incredible, read this in verse 9, that he, that is Jesus, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. That is one of the most awesome verses in the whole Bible. That Jesus, through the grace of God, might taste death for every 
men. Hear me today. That is why in 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, Paul probably attending some funeral would write those incredible words, amen, that there is a day coming when death will be swallowed up in victory. Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? There is none, because Jesus for the, has tasted death for every man. Hallelujah. So that Jesus has went through the grave and come out the other side. Uh, hallelujah. So that our graves are not a grave at all. It's just a it's just a stepping stone. It's just a, it's just a tunnel in through, through to the other side. It's just, a, it's just leaving here and waking up there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's closing your eyes here and open your eyes with Jesus. Praise God. He has tasted death for every man. For it... For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the cap captain of their salvation perfect through the sufferings of the cross. So here he, he is saying is that he's going to bring many sons. That is, that's us. That's, that's the lost people that are come, coming to Jesus. And he has made Jesus the captain, the captain of our salvation. He is the captain of our salvation. Amen. Uh, and he was made perfect through suffering on the cross. And we'll stop here in verse 11. For both he, and I'll have to talk about this some next week, for both he that sanctifieth, we're going to talk a little bit about sanctification, and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause, that is sanctification, that we are all one, he is not ashamed to call them or call us his brothers. Amen. Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. That'd be a good place to stop. We'll, we'll just pick up there again. Lord we, Lord, we just thank you today. Thank you for the book of Hebrews and thank you for allowing us to just walk through these verses today and, and glean knowledge of your word that will make us stronger in our faith, give us greater hope in what you did for us at the cross, hallelujah, and, and greater understanding that neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Right except the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.